So I'm going to show the deception of these people and uh, how hard they are in their hearts. How insensitive to the Lord and how they love disobeying and disregarding Scripture, right and left. So this one guy, Gary Gill or Gull, I can't quite read it. Um, he has commented on the channel before with very rude and offensive comments. He's a once saved, always saved advocate, and uh, he created his channel. He's probably just a duplicate of uh, another uh, person who's commented before that I've blocked from commenting. And so he's created another one, tried to comment, but all comments are actually moderated on my channel now. So it doesn't matter. I'll still see what, what the nature of the comment is and decide whether to post it or not, whether to approve it or not. And in his case, um, he was so rude and offensive as once saved, always saved advocate, which every one of them are. I haven't met one single polite one yet. And um, none of them have the fruit of the Holy Spirit at all. I'm not exaggerating. I keep looking for one, hoping that one of them will have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Not a single one of them. And after, even if they seem nice at first, within just a few exchanges, they're using foul language. Just right and left out of the mouth. So here he is. He's writing again and he tries to, he tries to act like he, I don't know. It's one of these one phrase, uh, things that is implicitly offensive. Not to me, but to God. And so it says, when did you stop sinning? Exact time and place. So you see how offensive that is, right? So, that's it's on the video um let's see which video that's on um do not provoke god hebrews 3 7 through 19 do not provoke god saying to stop sinning which is exactly what the passage is saying as well so the first thing is that he doesn't believe scripture is the divinely inspired testimony of god uh even if he it confesses that it is he treats it as if it's not because he doesn't take it for what it says. He doesn't seem to believe that we must obey what it says. So when I read these passages, I'm going to read to you. Um, if he's listening to this video, which he probably will, he won't believe any of them anyway. He'll discount them in some way or another. The Old Testament ones, he'll, he'll probably think to himself, oh, that's Old Testament, we don't have to obey it. Since when does it say that we don't have to obey the Old Testament? It's still the testimony of God. And it's still the testimony of God to us because it was preserved for us to read. In fact, it, it mentions that the Old Testament is for that purpose, for us. So it's not just for the Jews. It's not just for before the church. It's for us as well. Otherwise, we wouldn't, uh, Paul couldn't refer to Adam and Eve as a theological argument, and Jesus couldn't refer to it either. But they do. And that was the only part of the Bible that was written, and that's what Jesus and the apostles constantly referred to for us to obey. So that kind of attitude doesn't let you off the hook. And then I'll focus on two references, three, four references in the New Testament that has to do with holiness as well. All right, so let me just point out that when someone asks a question like this, when did you stop sinning? Exact time and place. The first thing to realize is that that's irrelevant to the message. The message isn't invented by me. I'm not the one who came up with the rule to stop sinning. Therefore, I don't have to prove anything. But the message stands on the character of God and the authority of God. God's authority is most supreme, and he is the one who said, stop sinning, and then his son said, stop sinning, and then the son's apostle said, stop sinning. How many more people in the line of authority over you, starting from the very top, do you need to tell you to stop sinning before you believe that you have to stop sinning and that it's possible to stop sinning? You have God himself saying it. You have his son, Jesus Christ, saying it. You have his apostle, John, saying it. And the author of Hebrews, whoever he may be. So, since you reject all of those that are all in the testimony of God, you reject God himself. 
has nothing to do with me. Whether I sin or I don't sin, it's irrelevant. It's completely irrelevant. But you want to focus on that so that if I say that I do sin, you say, well, then why should I stop sinning? Well, why is that important? If the Bible says stop sinning, and a sinner says to you, the Bible says you must stop sinning, why are you sinning? You can't turn around to him and say, well, you're not sinning, so I don't have to. What, like two children? <laughs> That's, you're not going to get away with it. Because God judges each man by his own actions, and we'll see that in one of these passages, which is telling us to stop sinning. So God built that into the testimony. You can't get away with it by pointing to someone else and saying, well, you know, you're not sinning. Uh, you're, you're sinning, so why should I stop sinning? I don't have to stop sinning. Because you're not, you haven't stopped sinning, you know. So you can't do that. Secondly, if I were to say, yes, I have stopped sinning, you would say, he would say, he would say, you are a liar. I, I had someone say that before. I didn't even answer the question. And I, in fact, I think it was this guy. He says, well, you know, I will ask you this question. And if you say that you stopped sinning, then I know that you're a liar. So he wasn't asking the question. He wasn't asking the question. He's simply saying what he believes, that you can't have stopped sinning, which means you're a liar. And if you say that you must stop sinning, you're a hypocrite. And so he doesn't believe that anyone can stop sin, sin, um, stop sinning, right? So right, I'm going to prove him wrong with the scriptures right here, and not me, but the testimony of God will prove him wrong. And it doesn't, let me just say again, that it doesn't matter for his position with God whether I sin or not. It doesn't affect his outcome before God. His outcome before God is completely based on whether he stops sinning or not, as is mine. My outcome with God is completely based on whether I stop sinning or not. So we each stand before God on our own based on whether we stop sinning or not. So let's go ahead and read the testimony of God. And I will point everyone back to that again. You are responsible for your own sin, not mine. And I'm not responsible for yours. Now, if I see you sinning and I don't tell you and you die in your sin, then I'm also responsible for that. That it does says in Eze say in Ezekiel. All right, so let's go to Deuteronomy 23, 14. This is all King James. And I think I'll go ahead and pull this up so you can read it too. I've just gone ahead and uh, put these in a text file so that I can read the, them more readily. Uh, let's see. Share that up here. And this is a text file. That should be that one. Okay. Okay, Deuteronomy twenty three fourteen, For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee and turn away from thee. Because when we have an unclean thing in us, the Lord God turns away from us. He will not abide an unclean thing among us. That's a principle. Leviticus 11, 44 through 45. For I am the Lord your God, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. It says it like three times, oh, four times really, but three times very clearly in there. Three times. Sanctify yourselves. Be holy, for I am holy, and then be holy, for I am holy. Pretty clear. Leviticus 19.2 Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. 
So there it is again. <clears throat> then we have Leviticus 27. Sanctify yourselves therefore and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 20:26. 20, and ye shall be holy unto me, for I am the Lord, for I the Lord am holy, and have severed you from other people that ye should be mine. Leviticus 21, 8. Thou shalt sanctify him therefore, for he offereth the bread of thy God. He shall be holy unto thee, for I the Lord which sanctify you am holy. Now we go to the New Testament. 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Conversation means like manners, like uh, uh, how you conduct your life. Um, because it is written, be holy for I am holy. So it's referring back to the Old Testament. So it says, it says, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be holy. Be holy, for I am holy. And the whole passage there says, Therefore prepare your minds for action. Be sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance. So, it says that we must be obedient children. And it says that part of that obedience is to not be conformed to the lusts that you used to have when you were ignorant of God. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior, manner of conversation, behavior. 16. Because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. 1 Thessalonians 4, 7, For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Matthew 5, 48, Not exactly holiness, it's about completion. The word perfect is literally completion. It comes from the word teleos, which means arrival at a destination. Be you therefore complete, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is complete. Hebrews twelve fourteen. Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. So, the testimony of God is testifying against all of you who do not believe that you need to stop sinning. Against every one of you who say that you do not need to stop sinning. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Do you think you're going to be saved without holiness? I hope you don't think so. And if you think that you need holiness to be saved, do you think that you're going to receive that holiness as an imputation from Jesus Christ? No, you're not. Otherwise, it would not command you to be holy. Be holy as I am holy. Be holy as he is holy. If there was imputation of holiness, there would be no command to be holy, because there would be no requirement of action in order to achieve holiness. Be holy means to do holiness so that you are holy. So, there is no other way. It doesn't mention taking on the holiness of Christ. It doesn't mention that. That's a modern day idea that we're trying to, well, obviously is invented by the devil, to keep you from achieving holiness. And this idea that works has nothing to do with our salvation is of the devil. Now, I'm not talking about human works where we come up with the idea about what we're supposed to do. You can go see the video on that of two two different works in the Bible. And some people's eyes have really been opened to this. 
The Protestant Reformation is one of the most damaging events in the history of the Church. I'm not advocating returning to the Catholic Church. I'm saying that some of the most dramatically devastating doctrines to Christians in all of history have come out of the Protestant Reformation, and it has created the apostate church in which we now see in America many people are participating. You can see the, all the videos here on this channel which document, which document how these doctrines are opposed to the gospel of Jesus Christ as it is written in Scripture. Not only that, they also practice idolatry in the church. And there's a special video that you'll see uh, on the front of the channel that's uh, highlighted. It's about exalting man as God. So I hope that this clarifies this issue a lot, that if you ask me, when did you stop sinning? I will not answer the question. Why won't I answer the question? Because if I talk about stopping sinning, I'm then starting to boast about myself. It's not about me. It's about God. It's about obeying the Father. And if you want to know if it's possible or not, then try it. Meet with the Father and do not miss a day. Meet with Him and throw yourself on the ground and confess that you're just a bag of dirt with breath breathed into you and the lights turned on and just that you're ready. If He's going to take you right now, you're ready. And therefore, just do whatever you want with me. What do you want me to do today? And do it. Don't waver from it. Do it. Test Him and see if it's not possible, since he has testified to this throughout the scriptures repeatedly, test it and see. And if you're unwilling to test it, then shut your mouth. You have no business talking about it if you're unwilling to test the Lord to see if he is good. If you're unwilling to see if what he says is true, then shut your mouth. Just shut your mouth. You have no business talking about the subject. And to the rest of you, Godspeed. Keep walking the walk. Be faithful. Be obedient. You know what it is. You know what it's like. Stay on the course. If you do sin, go to the Father immediately. Ask for forgiveness. Sincerely ask for forgiveness. But you've got to stop doing it first. Okay? Stop doing it. Make that commitment. Stop doing it. Make that commitment to stay on that path again and ask the Lord for forgiveness. And walk in the way and do not waver. That way of holiness is the way. Do not listen to these men who are of a corrupt mind, who all they want to do is argue against Jesus and his gospel. You stick with Jesus because he is our Lord. Not Calvin, not Luther, not Billy Graham, not John MacArthur, none of these men. Jesus Christ is our Lord. You stick with him. You follow the way of obedience. And may the Lord bless you as you seek him and obey him with all your heart. Remember to subscribe down below and like the video and share it on your Facebook and other social media. And then make a comment, whether a question or a comment. We read all of them and we try to respond to all. Get on over to our website, The Rooted Word, and start reading the translation and also the articles that we've posted. It's at therootedword.com, therootedword.com. And may the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart.